Hello everyone, it's Thomas from Runway Insight Aviation YouTube channel and welcome to yet another video. In this video, I am bringing you the ultimate 2024 Microsoft Flight Simulator settings guide. First of all, I would like to talk you through what you can expect from today's video, so the purpose of this video is to give you the perfect balance of performance and graphics. I feel like this is a never-ending discussion, so I hope this video can make your life a bit easier. All the tweaks and settings I'll be showing you in today's video are my personal ones, which I use the simulator with on a daily basis. I tested these settings on multiple screens with different resolutions and refresh rates, uh, resolutions including 1080p, 1440p, ultra-wide 1440p, and refresh rates of 60Hz and 165Hz, so I really think these settings can give you the perfect balance. The first adjustments we are going to make are not in the simulator itself, but rather in the NVIDIA control panel. So open your Windows browser and type NVIDIA control panel and open it up. Here you need to navigate to manage 3D settings in the left menu, so click on that and switch from global settings to program settings. Here from the drop down menu, find and select Microsoft Flight Simulator. The first feature we are interested in is anisotropic filtering. Anisotropic filtering, as I like to call it distance sharpness, needs to be set to a higher value in order to give you the best in-game experience. At the same time, if it is set to a higher value, it can affect your performance quite a lot, so that's why I like to leave it off entirely in the simulator and rather setting it up in the control panel. You want to switch it from application control to 16 times. If you scroll down a bit, you should see low latency mode, which is the next feature we are interested in, and definitely make sure to set this to ultra. This will give you the lowest input lag, so that's always what we want. If you scroll down even further, here are the next features we want to change. Power management mode is first of the three, and definitely make sure to set it to prefer maximum performance. This will ensure that your PC won't switch to low power mode, for example, while flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Next feature is texture filtering anisotropic sample optimization. Leave that off. And the next one, texture filtering negative LOD bias, switch that to clamp. And that's pretty much it. So as you can see, we have changed one, two, three, four, five features in the control panel so now just make sure to hit apply to save all the settings you can now close the control panel and start your microsoft flight simulator so once your simulator is up and running you can click on options then general options and let's start with graphics first thing is first definitely always make sure to have your display mode set to full screen when it is set to windowed it can easily uh, get uh, unfocused and uh, it can affect your performance again so set this to full screen here full screen resolution I would always recommend to set this to your screen resolution. Uh, as you can see, you can choose from multiple ones, but definitely always go for the resolution of your screen. Next setting is anti-aliasing, set this to TAA. Next is render scaling, so make sure that your render scaling is at least your screen resolution. At the same time, I wouldn't recommend going uh, any higher, since you should not technically see that much of a difference, but definitely do not go under your screen resolution. So uh, always find what is your screen resolution and set the render scaling according to your screen resolution. Set AMD sharpening to 100. Next uh, setting is V-Sync, so turn that on, I like to limit the frames a bit so they do not jump up and down like crazy. Next thing, NVIDIA reflects uh, low latency, so turn that off. And uh, frame rate limit, uh, this is uh, a uh, setting that is in close contact with V-Sync. So uh, my uh, screen, this uh, Quad HD screen is a 165 hertz screen. So uh, limiting this to 50% uh, will give me just over 80 frames, which uh, I almost never hit uh, anyway. But um, definitely if you have a 60 hertz monitor, you can turn Turn the VSync on and limit the frames, for example, to 100%, so it will limit your FPS at 60 frames per second. DirectX version is DirectX uh, 11. 
please make sure to uh, not really use Direct uh, X 12 because it's still in beta and you do not really want to have uh, beta uh, and uh, in progress stuff in your simulator in my opinion so leave that at Direct X 11. Now global rendering quality if I set this to uh, high, medium or uh, ultra, it will give us a preset for all the settings which we do not really like because we want to master everything ourselves. So first things first, terrain level of detail, set this to 125. I feel like this is uh, again the best balance between performance and graphics. Now off screen terrain pre-caching, we will get to the cache thing uh, a bit later, but uh, I can tell you that I like to uh, keep my rolling cache off entirely and set the pre-caching to ultra. This should give you some uh, better uh, frames when turning around quickly for example. Uh, because it basically keeps the train data in your memory and therefore when you turn around fast it doesn't need to load everything from scratch it is pre-cached so it gives you better performance again terrain vector data i have that set to high buildings high as well trees medium and grass and bushes medium be careful with this option, grass and bushes, uh, I wouldn't recommend going any higher than high, maybe high is a bit too much uh, as well. Uh, I would leave this at medium because this option eats performance uh, a lot, so definitely be careful with this one. Objects level of detail, uh, I like to keep it at 100. So next up, volumetric cloud. So as you can see, I have it set to high. I wouldn't recommend really going to ultra because uh, if it is set to ultra, then you can uh, encounter some bad frames uh, while flying in thunderstorms, uh, etc. So I feel high is the perfect balance of performance and graphics once again. Texture resolution, keep that at high. And now we are getting to anisotropic filtering, which uh, uh, if you uh, remember, we set in the control panel to 16 times, but this eats performance within the simulator. So keep this setting off and set it in the control panel instead, which we have already done. Texture super sampling, I feel like 4x4 four four is the best way to go. As you can see, it's halfway. Uh, in this case, again, it's the perfect balance. So go for this setting. You can always go even further uh, because I feel like 6x6 six is still okay, but 4x4 uh, four four for me works best. Texture synthesis, uh, leave that uh, at medium. Water waves, also medium. This eats performance quite a lot, so uh, definitely do not go to high. Maybe you can go even to low, but um, yeah, I feel like medium again is the best balance. Now, shadow maps, uh, as you can see, I have it set to 4K, which uh, is not allowed by default by Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, if you uh, would like to uh, know how I set the shadow maps to 4K and bypass passing the fact that Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't allow you to do so, then check my other tutorial on how to fix shadows in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Terrain shadows 512, contact shadows medium, windshield effects medium, ambient occlusion medium, cube map reflections, uh, leave that at uh, 192. You could go all the way up to uh, 256, but uh, the difference between these two settings, uh, it, it's not that much. So I feel like uh, saving a bit of performance on this is uh, always welcome. So go for 192. Then Raymarch reflections, medium, light shafts, medium, bloom on. I always like to have the simulator with a bit of a bloom, so definitely I would recommend uh, setting this to on. Depth of field, medium, motion blur, medium, lens correction, off and lens flare on. And last but not least, glass cockpit refresh rate. I like to keep it at medium, because if you go to low, sometimes you can encounter laggy glass cockpit and that's not really good while flying IFR. So uh, again, medium is the best uh, option in my opinion, because if you go to a high all the way up, then you can lose performance because of uh, not really necessary high uh, refresh rate on your glass cockpit, which you won't really notice. So go for medium, apply and save the settings and let's move on. 
I do not really want to go in much detail regarding uh, camera options because I feel like this is uh, more up to the pilot what uh, you like, what you do not like, but I will just uh, gradually go through all these uh, settings. I will uh, scroll through them so you can see how I have everything set up. The exact same story is with sound, so you can just uh, simply go through them uh, on your own. Uh, obviously, do not uh, copy the volume levels or anything like that. You really need to uh, make sure that you hear everything correctly uh, within your system. But again, these are my settings. And now we're getting to traffic options. So let's start with aviation traffic, aviation traffic type. You can set this to real time online or uh, AI uh, offline uh, traffic if you're flying offline. But uh, if you're flying on VATSIM, definitely uh, have this turned off. And then uh, as well for maximum realism, uh, turn the traffic nameplates off. Airport life, this is really important actually because sometimes you can encounter fire trucks, for example, just blasting down the taxiway and crashing into an aircraft, which is uh, not really what we want, do we? So uh, definitely switch the airport vehicle density to off. If you use uh, add on sceneries for airports, don't worry, uh, the airport vehicle density will be there. They will be driving uh, there on their respective routes and not on the taxiways, which is important so uh, definitely set this off uh, in the simulator and uh, the sceneries will work just fine so you do not need to worry ground aircraft density I like to uh, have this set to off as well and then worker density 50% and we're progressing to land and sea traffic, so leisure boats 75, road vehicles 75, ships and ferries 75 as well, and fauna density at 100. Now, uh, these sliders can affect your performance quite a lot actually, so um, definitely play around with these sliders, but um, these settings work just fine for my system, so you can give it a go as well. AI and multiplayer traffic details, so use generic aircraft models for AI traffic, I have that set to off for multiplayer, that is the in-game Microsoft Flight Simulator multiplayer, I have that set to on, uh, then show multiplayer aircraft in a close proximity, I have that set to off so it doesn't distract me that much, and traffic variety set to low, again apply and save, and going to data. Data is a really important tab in the general options because, uh, as you probably know, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator uses uh, Bing Maps and online uh, servers for rendering the world as close to reality as possible, basically. So uh, I once tried flying with the online functionality and photogrammetry off and it wasn't the greatest experience, trust me. So I definitely have all these sliders set to on, uh, that being the uh, online functionality on, uh, Bing Data World Graphics on, then the photogrammetry on, live real world air traffic on, uh, live weather on definitely and multiplayer on as well. You can, uh, for instance, turn off the real world air traffic and multiplayer because if you're flying on VATSIM that doesn't really affect you. Data consumption and data bandwidth usage limit. These settings are actually pretty important because if you have a, a slower internet, then you can limit your bandwidth usage uh, using this uh, option here and limit the general data uh, consumption as well. You can also set the data tracking reset day to uh, whichever day of the month you like. Scrolling all the way down, rolling cache settings, so as you can see, I have my rolling cache disabled, uh, that's because my internet speed is actually quite decent, but if you have a slower internet, then you can turn this on and store your cache somewhere on your drive. You can limit the cache by gigabytes and setting the path to your desired one. Flight model, so this is another really important tab in the general options. Uh, you definitely want to set the flight model to the modern standards. You can switch to legacy as well, but you do not really want to do that because you want to have the flight model as realistic as possible. So as you can see, I have the modern one, global preset is realistic and then all the sliders maxed out to 100 to give me the best realism possible. 
Moving on in this next tab, maybe just one uh, important setting is units of measurement. I have it set to hybrid, so make sure to set it to uh, whatever uh, setting you uh, like most. Uh, as you can see here, you have the description for that. Moving on to accessibility, this uh, is really up to you guys. I will just scroll down uh, this uh, section so you can see what my settings look like, but this is really up to you because it's more about customizing the interface and also if you want to turn on subtitles, for example, or the uh, main color to be different. But uh, yeah, I like to keep it default uh, and uh, I haven't really played with these settings at all. Developers. Here you can turn on developer mode, which uh, is actually sometimes quite useful. So if you turn it on, as you can see uh, here, uh, we have this uh, dev mode uh, menu now uh, visible. And uh, you can also access your live FPS counter by going into the debug and then display FPS. So if you want to measure your FPS, then you can do it this way. But we will leave the developer mode off for now. VR is supported by Microsoft Flight Simulator, so if you have a VR set, then you can set it up right here. I do not have one, so I haven't really touched these settings. And the last tab is experimental, so uh, here is one really important thing, and uh, that is the low power mode. Definitely switch this to off, but uh, the other settings, you can uh, go through them and edit them as you like. After you tweaked all your settings, definitely do not forget to apply and save them. Now we're back in the options and uh, another thing which is important is assistance. So uh, I will just uh, open every single one of these and show you how I have everything set up. You can uh, change uh, whatever you like uh, to basically uh, your style, but uh, this is how I have everything set up. And that's pretty much it from Microsoft Flight Simulator options. You will need to set your controls, obviously, in order to fly an aircraft, but uh, I am sure you will set that on your own correctly. Regarding other visual tweaks and features, I only use the NVIDIA Freestyle feature, also known as the NVIDIA in-game filters, as uh, you can see on the screen right now. But if you want to see how I have everything set up here, please check my other video on how to make your Microsoft Flight Simulator look absolutely amazing in 2024, completely for free. And that's the video done. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new from me today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me in the comment section down below. Also, check the description for all the important links to the videos I mentioned today. And until next time, take care guys.